We were at the point to where we had almost to the point to where we were ready to do our substitution to get the same base because we noticed that the base x doesn't have the same exponentation. And so what we can do is we can say, well, um, let's let n be equal to k plus 2 in the first series, and let's let n be equal to k in the second series. And that'll just boost the index up by 2, which means that we are going to have the same exponentation. So at this point, we can say series k equals negative 2 to infinity, c sub k plus 2, x to the k plus r plus 2, quantity k plus r plus 2 square minus a quarter, and then plus series k equals 0 to infinity, c sub k, x to the n, or k plus r plus 2 equals 0. All right. Um, and at this point, just like we've done a number of times, we're going to break off a few terms. So we're going to break off k equals negative 2 and negative 1. Um, and if we do that, that's going to leave us with c naught x to the r quantity r square minus a quarter and then plus c1 x to the r plus 1 and then we're going to have times the quantity of r plus 1 square minus a quarter and then now all the indexes are going to be zero for the lower bounds, so plus series k equals zero to infinity, c sub k plus two, um, times x to the k plus r plus two, and then we're going to multiply that by k plus r plus two square minus a quarter, and then plus one more series, so plus our series k equals 0 to infinity, c sub k, x to the k plus r plus 2. And we're going to set that equal to 0. And I'm also going to set it, and I'm going to add in a 0x to the r and a 0x to the r plus 1. And that's so we can clearly illustrate what's going to go on with these kind of rogue summons that are just kind of all to the side. We're going to factor out the, the summation. And so we're going to end up with c naught x to the r times the quantity of r squared minus a quarter plus c1 x to the r plus 1 times the quantity of r plus 1 squared minus a quarter. Factoring out the series, k equals 0 to infinity. That's a zero in English, sorry. Um, x to the k plus r plus 2. And what's that going to leave us with? c sub k plus 2 times the quantity of k plus r plus 2 square minus a quarter. And then plus c sub k. Um, and that's going to be equal to our 0 plus 0 r x to the r and then plus 0 x to the r plus 1. All right. So mercifully, at this point, now we can construct a system of equations. Um, and remember that since we have 0 as the coefficient of x to the r, that means that 0 must be equal to, first of all, c naught times r square minus a quarter. So that's one of our equations. And since 0 is equal to the coefficient of x to the r plus 1, we could say, in fact we will say, that c sub 1 times the quantity of r plus 1 square uh, minus a quarter is equal to 0. And then finally, c sub k plus 2 times the quantity of um, k plus r plus 2 square minus a quarter plus c sub k 
is equal to zero. All right, now we could, we have to remember that C naught can never equal zero. If that does, that means that our entire series is going to be equal to zero, which doesn't really help us. So from that, the only thing that could possibly be true is that r squared minus a quarter is equal to zero, which implies that r is going to have two roots. It's going to have minus one half, and it's going to have positive one half. We could go through and find both of these with no problem. However, remember at the beginning of the problem that we were trying to find j to the one half x. So because we're finding j to the one half x, we are going to use the positive one half for this one. Um, if you ever had to do something where you might have had to find j to the minus one half x, maybe in the not so distant future, then you would just let r be equal to minus one half and pick up from there. At this point, since r is going to be equal to a half, we can substitute back in right here. Um, and if we do that, c1 times one half plus one square minus a quarter has to be equal to zero. Now, clearly, this is going to be three halves squared, which is nine fourths. Nine fourths minus one is going to be eight fourths, which is just going to be two C1 is equal to zero. And that just means that C1 has to be equal to zero. Fancy way of just saying that. All right. Now, we also know the value of R is going to be one half. So now we can substitute back in to this equation and hopefully we can get our recurrence relation. All right, so last thing we're going to do is we're going to say that c sub k plus 2 times the quantity of um, 1 half plus k plus 2 square <clears throat> minus a quarter plus c sub k is going to be equal to 0. And I know this looks pretty awful when we do it. All right, but it's actually going to work out fairly nicely, hopefully. So this means that c sub k plus 2, now we know that this is just going to be k plus 5 halves square, and we're just going to square that out. So if we square that out, that just gives us k square plus 5k plus 25 fourths minus a fourth plus ck equals 0. Um, this just becomes 6, because you'll get 24 fourths, and then we can factor this trinomial that's left over. Um, we'd have k squared plus 5k plus 6, which is going to factor into k plus 3, k plus 2, plus c sub k equals 0. And then finally, we can get to that recurrence relation. c sub k plus 2 is going to be equal to the opposite of c sub k over k plus 3, k plus 2. All right, now, at this point, we're going to use our generating function, and we're just going to use method of iteration. So we're going to have some values of k, and then we're going to figure out what c sub k plus 2 is. All right, so let's start off with 0 and see what happens. So c sub 2 is going to be equal to the opposite of c naught divided by 3 times 2, and that's fine. We're just going to leave it like that. Um, when we substitute 1 back in, we're going to be treated. C3 is going to be equal to the opposite of C1 divided by 4 times 3. And fortunately, we remember that all the way back up here, that C1 was equal to 0. So happy day for us. That means that C3 is equal to 0. Very nice. Um, then... We're going to get C4, which is going to be the opposite of C2, um, divided by 5 times 4. We know what C2 is, though. C2 is this animal right here. And all we're going to do is we're just going to substitute that back in. Um, and what does that do for us? Well, that is going to leave us with the opposite of negative c naught over 3 times 2 divided by 5 times 4. And I think a lot of you guys are seeing right now that this works out really nicely because 
we are going to end up with my screen stops moving. Not sure what's going on with that, but that's going to end up with C naught over 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. And just because we can, let's just throw in the times 1 there. All right. And you can clearly see that that's going to be 5 factorial. And so now we're looking pretty good because at this point we're starting to see a pattern because last time we had 3 times 2 and we could throw in another times 1 there. So we get 3 factorial. Um, remember C naught, the initial term, can be written as C naught over 1 which is really C naught over 1 factorial. Now let's just do a couple more, maybe one more, just to verify our suspicion. All right. um, if we substitute 3 back in, again, we're delighted to see that we get the opposite of C3 over 6 times 5. We know C3 is equal to 0. How do we know that? Because we just go back up here and we see C3 is equal to 0. And so that's nice. Let's just do one more. Let's get C6. And C6 is going to be the opposite of C4. And we're going to divide that by 6. Oh, I'm sorry. That's going to be 7 times 6. And fortunately for us, we know what C4 is. So we just go back a little ways. And this is C4. We're just going to substitute it in immediately. And that's just going to become opposite C naught over 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. All right, so where does that leave us? Well, we have to do a little bit of investigation here. Not much. But what it leaves us with is the fact that we're getting an odd factorial. All right, so this is odd and this is odd. All right, so we're in pretty good shape here because we keep seeing a lot of odd factorials. We also see an alternating sequence that's going on here. So we have positive, negative, positive, negative. So if I was to make a guess as to what's going on with this, I would guess that we're going to end up with that C sub n is going to be minus 1 to the n C naught divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. And why 2n plus 1? Because remember, odd definition is 2n plus 1. Um, going back up, clearly we have an odd, we have an odd, we have an odd, and even for just c naught by itself, we have an odd. So it looks like the even terms aren't going to contribute anything um, to the solution to this. All right, so that's pretty good news. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to do at this point is plug it back in to find our solution for um, C sub K. And so when we do this, <clears throat> this is going to end up being, we know what CN is, so CN for us is going to be equal to, or I'm sorry, J one half of x is going to be equal to, remember we have our series, n equals 0 to infinity c sub n x to the n plus r. Remember we used that r was a half, and we know that c sub n is this, and we're only using the odd terms, okay? So um, for us, and so what we can do is we can rewrite this, and we can say, j1 half x is going to be equal to series n equals 0 to infinity minus 1 to the n c naught over 2n plus 1 factorial and we're going to multiply this by x to the 2n plus 1 so instead of n we're going to plug in 2n plus 1 plus a half. All right. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody that because we're only using odd terms we have to plug in um, the 2n plus 1 otherwise we're not going to make it it's not going to work out too well for us. All right. um, and then at this point we're going to go ahead maybe split off this x to the 1 half. All right. So we're going to rewrite this as 
series n equals 0 to infinity. Um, we have an x to the 1 half, and then we're going to have series, or we have this minus 1 to the n, c sub naught, 2n plus 1 factorial, and then we're going to have our x to the 2n plus 1. All right. Um, now, I think I might have made a boo-boo up here, all right? Because if I look at this, this is an even term, and this is an even term, but the factorial is odd. All right, so if I go back down here, let me do this again. All right, so this should be 2n plus a half, all right? Um, and again, that's because the factorial is odd, all right? But the value of c is even, all right? So we're only looking for even values of c in this case, but we're looking for odd values of the factorial, all right? So that's going to clear it up just a little bit, so I apologize for that. Um, so going back down just a little bit more, we get this expression. All right, um, I'm going to factor out that x to the one half. All right. So, and we're going to do some algebra magic. All right. So, and we're almost done with this. So now this just becomes minus one to the n c naught x to the 2n, 2n plus 1 factorial. All right, now, you probably recognize that the series is almost the sine function. All right, so this kind of looks like almost the sine function, except that we need a 2n plus 1 power. So if for some reason this was 2n plus 1, we'd be in good shape. So let's do this. Let's multiply by x over x, all right? And what would that do? Well, that would make it so that over here, we would have x to the 1 half over x, so we're just going to factor this x on the outside, series n equals 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the n, c naught, x to the 2n plus 1, divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. And I think this is perfect at this point because what this is going to give us is that j1 half of x is going to be equal to simplifying this. That's x to the minus 1 half. And then this whole function right here, which I'm going to highlight in orange or box in orange, at some point, maybe possibly feasibly, potentially, if my computer lets me, that is the function of sine of x in the, in the Taylor series. So this is our sine of x, and I believe that's exactly what we were looking for. Because if you look all the way back up at the beginning of the problem, remember we said that y equals x to the minus one half sine of x. Okay, so. Hopefully that illustrates for you the techniques necessary to work with some of these Bessel functions. Um, and what's really cool about them is that certain, um, certain forms, such as the j1 half of x, is going to simplify really nicely for us.